Bonjour and welcome to Rendezvous. Our first program for this year comes from the National Film Corporation at the screening of Dr. Sumitra Pirisar's last film, Vaishnavi. And this formed part of the closing event of celebrations to mark 75 years of Franco-Sri Lankan bilateral diplomatic relations. And I think nothing could be more fitting uh, than uh, for concluding this event and the celebration uh, than giving the floor, actually, if I may say so, to Sumitra Pils. Uh She is one of the link and one of the bridges uh, between the two countries. And her art, her movies, uh, illustrate the relation between the two countries and also something which is, I think, at the heart of so this celebration which is the relation between heart and society and how the two are linked and actually deeply linked and deeply interconnected one with the other. And she was both an artist and a civil servant, uh, ambassador of France, and in both capacities, she worked to bring the two countries closer. So we are grateful to her. Uh, Sumitra Piris and uh, Celeste James Fees, I have known from childhood uh, and I have deep admiration for them. I also know how much they were influenced in their artistic career uh, by France. Uh, they, uh, they spent many years in France, in the France French uh, cultural scene, and uh, this is very evident in their cinematic work. Uh, and for these reasons, I think it is very, very fitting that we should conclude the 75 years celebrations between the two countries with this um, last piece from her, her, her last cinematic creation. It's, it's a beautiful film and I think I have lovely memories being with her for one week and to see how, and how much they enjoyed, both of them going through that process. Like it was so nice being with them and so happy and I'm happy that I was also involved in the film. Our rendezvous is with Vilasini Tampo Otam, researcher and professor from the La Reunion University, who spoke on the beginnings and evolution of cinema in colonial and post independent Ceylon. Vilasini is a member of the research centre DIR, a multidisciplinary research unit that straddles various specialities French, English, Spanish, and German, cultural and literary studies, the social sciences, education, etc., of the University of La Reunion the only French and European university in the Indian Ocean. I would say that my interest in Sri Lankan cinema has to do with my personal life first, of course, we all have our trajectories. But the starting point, I think the catalyst for all this was my father, as, as everybody knows, it's not a secret. He was Tamil and uh, making Sinhalese films. And from there, a number of 
really interesting questions cropped up. Um, I have to add that uh, uh, just as much as my area of research was why was Singhala cinema first developed by the Ceylon minorities, etc. Uh, the ethnic conflict or the tensions also brought up a really beautiful cinema in the 1990s with Vimukti and Prasanna uh, and Asoka. So the war has, has also been inspirational. So let's put it simply, it's the fact that I'm Sri Lankan born, uh, got married to a Frenchman, went into French university and came from a family of filmmakers. So it all converged to, you know, my becoming researcher in very modestly in Sri Lankan cinema. Early Sri Lankan cinema, how cinema came from India, but first from France, from the Frères Lumière, who, did, who showed the first screening, etc., in Paris. Obviously, for C C colonial C Ceylon to benefit from the moving image, it had to come through India from Europe. So what I did was, when I first started querying, people didn't have much. There was um, Nguyen Kumar, Nayanjit Kumar, Ranjit and his son, he, they, he had written uh, the Chronicles of Sinhala Cinema, a monumental magistral work in Sinhalese. And he was lovely. He said, you can use this. And that was my starting point. And I saw that he had delved into the colonial period, which is introduction of cinema, obviously, naturally, by people who were out, from outside the island. So the British, North Indians like Marvin, uh, T.H.J. Nurbai, these people actually developed the infrastructure. There was no local production. So from there, I traced the singular cinema right down to the golden age, which has been much written about. The symbolic year that has been retained is 1968, right? It's the, it, it's the year where a number of films like Sat Samudra, Han Salu, there, there, there were a number of productions that were released in 1968 that hit the international charts. So all the hard work by art directors like Lester James Pierce, but many others, D.B. Nihal Singer, who came who were groomed in the government film unit, in the style of the documentary. They forged a new grammar of cinema. And by 1968, it's a fantastic coincidence. It's 20 years after Broken Promise, because the first singular speaking uh, films came out in 1947, give and take 12 months. It was Asso Kamala and Broken Promise by Gardiner and Nigan. Exactly 20 years later, we find singular movie directors um, branching out and bringing to the world a cinema that's, that had the imprint of the, the culture of the majority. So it's 20 years from 1948, 1968. That's, that's the golden, that's the peak where singular cinema draws the attention of international juries. It's also 20 years after independence, 1948. So there are strange coincidences we, which, make, which makes you one think that cinema in fact is intimately linked to society, right? It's, uh, it reflects the society in which it was, to which it was introduced and in which it has evolved. At the level of the film art, um, I would say France has made a qualitative contribution. Uh, it, um, it is a major reference in terms of genre. Generically, you have the new wave, um, but it doesn't mean that France has exclusivity. There's also neorealism coming from Italy or the British documentary movement. These currents, these movements actually fed in fact, the singular directors who, who turned their back to the South Indian melodrama. I mean, the first generation of um, singular movies like Asokamala, Broken Promise, they were censured by the singular public or maybe the singular patriots because they said the directors were South Indian, um, the producers and directors were Ceylon Tamils or Muslims. So it was normal also for the Sinhalese people to, to go on a quest to give a new identity to their cinema. So the first generation was highly influenced by the South Indian melodrama, which meant that when they were looking for a new generic format, 
they turned to France, they turned to Italy, they turned to the British documentary movement. People essentially who were groomed within the government film unit, a number of directors who were just working at, as documentary filmmakers. I, I, you know, what comes to mind is, of course, Lester, who was there, who was called by Ralph Keane to come back to his, uh, you know, home country. I won't go into that. So, I mean, in, in a way, uh, Ralph Keane enabled uh, Singular Cinema to benefit from the genius of, of uh, Lester James Pierce. And um, as far as France is concerned, I was just going to say that France is part of the other European countries to have provided singular uh, movie directors with a new model of reference. Um, from the point of view of institutions, I think there's a Cinémathèque Française. Uh, I think Sumitra was also given training. Uh, Vimukti, uh, Prasanna and Asoka, they got international awards at Vesoul, at Amiens, at Cannes Film Festival. So France, by virtue of her own status as one of the countries, if not the country which gave the world cinema, um, for her to recognize and to welcome our directors is a great thing, I think, and that put Sri Lanka on the map of the world, to quote Basil Wright, after watching Ray Carver, I think. <laughs> It all began with the launch of my father's book in 2006 or seven. It's, a, it's a, you know, quite a way back. And she was a chief guest. And when she made the inaugural talk, um, she was emotional about the fact that a daughter could have written about a father, um, which she said specifically, it's public, that she would not, she would never know she would never experience the joy of a daughter or a son writing about a parent. So after the launch, um, my mother came up to me. She was very close to uh, Sumitra um, for having, of course, been part of the same generation. But beyond, um, my father and mother were very close to Philip Gunawardhan, Philip and Kusuma, right? They came for uh, film premieres and all that. And my mother came up to me and said, I was really touched by what Sumitra said. And I said, what do you mean? Um, would you <laughs> do something about it? And just as much as I was very busy, I thought, oh my goodness, uh, why not? So I came to see Sumitra and I realized what a wonderful person she was and how she had contributed in, in a large measure to singular cinema. So we had long conversations and she gave me her points of view and I gathered material. And I thought that I had really done something to come to bring a little, an extra stone to the edifice of Singhala Cinema, let's put it that way. As chairperson of the Lester James Pieris and Sumitra Pieris Foundation that have been revamped since Dr. Pieris and Mrs. Pieris passed away, we have a huge void in the, in the foundation, but with the support I have of the trustees and the new director board, I'm sure we would be able to go forward and keep to the vision of Dr. Pires, who was very, very interested in preserving all movies in Sri Lanka, especially the old ones that have got destroyed. So we are hoping that we would be able to have all the necessary help and support from everyone concerned to uh, get to our objective of preserving the movies as Dr. Peris was very, very keen on that. Sanjit 
ಚಾಯ 